Hey, what's up YouTube, and uh, welcome back to my beginner's guide to Dark Souls. So first thing you're going to notice, as you can see, the video is now in uh, HD. I went out and picked up the component cables yesterday, so uh, the rest of the videos will be in HD, so uh, let's give a nice cheer for that. Uh, you can also notice that we're not at the top of the bell tower anymore. Uh, I did use a homeward bone, as you can see here. Homeward bone, returned to the last bonfire, and it uh, brought us back to the bonfire here, just to save some time. And uh, we also had 10,000 souls. I did spend those souls. Uh, what I did was I increased uh, my vitality from 14 to 16, and I bumped my dexterity up one. And uh, then I used the remainder of those souls to, uh, to upgrade my heater shield to plus three, uh, because I already had a plus five weapon. And uh, I thought I wasn't gonna be using the heater shield, but uh, there isn't actually a, a decent shield until uh, later on in the game. So we're gonna, we're gonna probably be using this for a little while. I haven't upgraded my uh, armor at all uh, because we're going to be picking up the set I'll be using in the next area. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's head on our journey. Uh, your curiosity is going to lead you down here, and uh, if you come down here, you're probably going to get the crap scared off you. Uh, this guy is here. Uh, this is a Titanite demon. Um, they don't respawn, and there's a few of them throughout the game. They don't seem very intimidating at the far, as you can see, I'm easily dodging his attacks. Um, they, their strength truly lies is when you get up close to them at melee range, that uh, weapon they use there uh, can reach quite far and they do an immense amount of damage. Uh, we're not going to fight this one right now, we're going to fight him in the next video, so uh, what I would advise doing is instead of trying to run by, just strafe by with your shield up, it's uh, definitely a safer option because they do have a jump attack which, uh, which can one shot you, depending on uh, where it hits you. So we're just going to safely go by him for now. Don't worry, we'll be back for him. And we're going to come out into this forest gate area. Almost got hit there. And uh, we're being attacked by the forest here, so just, you know, usual tactics. Uh, these guys do have a grab attack. Uh, if they grab you with it, it does a large amount of damage. Uh, I've heard a thing where if you uh, mash the attack buttons while you're being attacked by a grab attack, it will, you know, reduce the time of the grab attack, but I'm not sure if this is true. But uh, let's take out the, oh, there he goes down there. See there, uh, they don't have any poise, so pretty much any attack will stagger them, so it's easy to take them out. Just uh, run along the right here because uh, it's a fatal fall down there, fairly certain. run out here and uh, you're gonna get uh, it's an ambush here get it an am ambush anyway so yeah see so, uh, that when you raise their arms up above their head like that they're going for the uh, grab attack both their arms so, uh, attack. Right, with some strong attacks there you go so I uh, picked up purple moss clumps purple moss clumps cure the poison status which uh, can be very useful in later games, so uh, be sure to have some of those on you, because uh, poison status slowly drains your health by, uh, I'm not sure the percentage, but it's a percentage, I believe. So uh, just be careful not to get poisoned, and if you are poisoned or in an area with poison, always carry those around. So we're gonna come up to this area, and uh, as you can see here, there is a door. Let's try to open it, and it is locked. Remember this door though, uh, is very important later, but currently uh, we cannot go through this door. So uh, we're going to go over here and see what this message says. It's usually messages uh, quite helpful around here, but uh, not sure how this person managed to get up there. Let's see how this person died. Hmm, they seem to have gone through the wall. I wonder what that could mean. Yep, there is a hidden bonfire back here. And uh... Judging from the fact that I cannot light this bonfire, uh, I am probably being invaded. Um, when you cannot light a bonfire, that's usually what that means. Uh, there's most, some bonfires are safe areas where you can't be invaded, but uh, this one is not, and there you go, the invasion failed, and I can now light the bonfire. So uh, we're going to kindle this bonfire up to max also. I like to kindle my fires, it's always good to have uh, plus 10 fires all around the world. Oh, I like did a little jig there. Alright, so uh, we're going to continue on in the world. 
Uh, so as you can see, we can't go through this door, but we can go through this uh, this pathway down here, which we're gonna do. So head on down here. And uh, there's another white light over there. Ignore that for now. And there's blood stain here. Let's uh, let's see what happened here. Well, uh, <laughs> that was actually him uh, being attacked by the grab attack there, but there was no, uh, since he was a bloodstain, it just looked really weird. Um, so we're going to have pillars there, and there's another ambush, of course. So two strikes with the strong attack, we'll take them down, very uh, useful to know, of course. Alright, and uh, you can take down that uh, ambush quite easily and uh, get yourself a large soul there. Heal up quickly. And uh, we're going to go through this white light. Of course, always be cautious through white lights. Alright. So, we're in a new area. As you can see, there's uh, some kind of creature lying over there. It's going to be some of these signs. Armor ahead. Ring ahead. Alright, first thing you're going to notice is you can see down here that this tree is moving. And uh, if you hit this tree, you can see a damage bar up here. So, we're going to go ham on the tree. And as you can see, the tree has fallen. And reveal the path for us. So, we're going to follow this tree path. A lot of players don't, don't know about this the first time around. I didn't. And I come across these strange creatures. They're also poisonous, and uh, they're not very difficult. I've never really had a problem with them. You can just take them out quite easily. Uh, they drop an item called Green Blossom, which is uh, a grass-type item that uh, speeds your stamina regeneration greatly for a minute. Very useful item. So, as you can see, there's another moving tree here, but this one uh, isn't in our way, so we can just walk past it. Uh, we're going to run over here. Looking for items. Being cautious. As you can see, there's a creature here. Lying down. Alright, well these guys are uh, heavily armored stone soldiers. They don't have a crazy amount of health, but they do have a lot of armor. They also will stick their sword in the air and cast a spell that is similar to a spell that the players can cast called Tranquil Walk of Peace, and it will slow your movement speed to as if you were completely over encumbered, so walking speed, and if you try to roll, you will do a stumbling, staggering action and won't roll at all. So uh, we're going to try to take this guy out. As you can see, their attacks do take up a large amount of stamina, and my attacks don't do a crazy amount of damage. So, just be very cautious with them. As you can see, they are down. He doesn't actually have a lot of health, just uh, a lot of armor. They do respawn, so uh, don't think you only have to fight them once. They can also have a chance to drop their uh, their weapons and shields, so it's uh, if you feel like using those, you can farm them. They are very heavy weapons. So, see here, these uh, creatures have jumped up to attack. And, uh, they can be dangerous in numbers, as you can see. Roll away here, pull out our shield. Thrust attack on the longsword, very useful. So, there have been uh, dropped items here. These are most likely the green blossom, yep. Might use those later, they come in handy against pretty much everything. You're never going to come into a situation where it wouldn't be better to have your stamina coming back faster. So, that dropped too, so we actually have a nice amount of green blossoms. Head over here and uh, get a soul of a proud knight, which is the uh, largest soul that we've found so far. So, I'm going to head over here, and uh, there's a pathway up here. Alright, you're going to run up here, and there is going to be another stone soldier. 
right at the top of this path. Um, the way I would recommend fighting him is you can pull him down to the little area where we just were to fight him. I wouldn't recommend fighting him in this little area. As you can see, it's pretty cramped. Well, actually, it's not too bad. Let's see. Okay, see that what he's doing there? He's using the spell that slows your movement speed, but it does leave him open, and uh, and actually, he's dead before it could uh, he could really take advantage of it. So here, you're gonna run up here, and uh, you're gonna find the wolf ring. Now, this ring is an extremely useful and very common ring uh, used by players. Let's see here, the uh, wolf ring it boosts poise. It's uh, belonged to Artorius the Abyss Walker. Uh, it boosts poise by 40 points, which can, of course, I explained in the first video, poise will make it so uh, you do not get interrupted when you're swinging your weapon. So uh, we, of course, are going to use this ring. I recommend using this ring on any character that does not have poise on their armor. Uh, it can help turn the tide in battle many times. So uh, just run and jump off there. You actually don't have to jump. You can just roll off. You won't die. Usually if you... Uh, aim your roll to roll off uh, onto this little ledge right here. So we're going to head back over to the bonfire here. Now, uh, I wouldn't recommend hitting the bonfire right now. Uh, what would happen is, is those trees that came back down here would uh, respawn and since they're not in the ground anymore they would just run out of the room and attack you in the hallway. We just, I don't want to deal with that, so uh, if you don't want to deal with these three guys in here again, don't hit the bonfire. Alright. So, as you can see here, there's another stone soldier, so uh, we're going to go over and pull him. I bet if I hadn't upgraded my shield, these guys would have been uh, a bit more of a problem. Oh, he's going for the buff right away. See, if you just uh, back out of his range, it uh, can't do anything to you. buff does last uh, about 10 seconds though, so as you can see I'm moving extremely slow. Yeah, it is gone now though, as you can see. Be very careful with these guys, they do hit quite hard. Uh, I do think because of the poise ring we just picked up, they would not knock me down in one hit anymore, but uh, they definitely would before. So, I'm going to take out that guy. And we're going to head over here to this little area. And uh, be careful here, as you can hear, something popped up behind us. So just uh, run out here, take a look. Yep, it's another ambush. So run out here. Uh, look on the tree. You can see that this thing in front of you is uh, is a kind of creature. It's not a vine. It's a it's like a lizard with two heads. So. Uh, Let's uh, get rid of that. And uh, we are going to pillage the Partisan. The Partisan is the weapon I mentioned that I will be using most of the playthrough. I won't be using it currently. I will use it after I upgrade it to plus five. Um, I love this spear. I'll show you guys why right now. Uh, there we go. We got an Egg Vermifuge. Uh, those are useful items for something later in the game and we'll, uh, we'll explore that later. But uh, let's check out the Partisan is a spear. Seems to have lower damage right now. It uh, has a quality scaling. Uh, it goes up to a DB scaling in dex, so it does get a better scaling later on. Uh, I'm going to equip it, and uh, I'm going to show you the cool thing about this spear. Uh, it has the normal spear pokes like this, but the strong attacks are uh, these wide sweeping arcs. And if you look at the description, it says uh, the wide range of the spear makes it adaptable to many situations. Its strength or its strength lies in its length, but in cramped quarters this backfires and slices ricochet off walls. This is extremely, extremely misleading. This weapon actually barely ricochets off the walls compared to other weapons I've used. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate it here. Like most weapons, like halberds, if you were to use them this close to a wall, they would bounce off, but uh, no, well, it bounced off there, but, uh, hold on a second, get my stamina back here. As you can see there, it's going through the wall quite easily. I have to be quite close to the wall for it to actually bounce off. 
I have to basically hit into the wall. So if I was slashing at something there, as you can see, look at that. Completely ignores the fact that there's a wall right there. Any other spear type weapon would usually ricochet completely. So uh, very useful in cramped quarters. Uh, even though it's a spear weapon, so you can normally just poke down long corners. It's just for taking out large groups, I just find this very, very effective. So uh, we're going to throw on the long sword again for now. So we're going to run over here to this item. Uh, be very careful when approaching this item. There is another ambush here. Um, I know for a fact that uh, they will not pop up unless I grab the item. Uh, there's two stone soldiers and a bunch of uh, bushes, so I'm not... See, there we go. I'm going to try to fight these guys separately. Don't want to fight them all at once. Okay, he's going for his thing right away, so that helps with us having a chance to uh, kill them. So, uh, pull him away. There's another stone soldier behind him, as you can see. Just uh, let his buff run out. You can see I'm moving very slowly. There we go, it's gone. So come on over here, buddy. Come over here where it's safe. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, they're very easy to uh, circle around and get behind. Their attacks uh, whip over your head. And uh, yeah, there you go, he's down. So we're getting lots of purple moss clumps. Uh, we picked up, blood, there we go, blood red moss clump. I didn't explain that. Uh, that will reduce bleed buildup, um, which is some enemies and some weapons will cause a bleed bar to fill up. And uh, if it's at full and you want it to uh, go down, because uh, when you bleed, it rips off a percentage of your maximum health if the bar is to fill up. So if you feel like reducing that bar, just uh, use one of these and it'll remove all the bleed. Uh, we're going to go over here and grab this, which is the Elite Knight. Helm, Armor, Gauntlets. This is the set that I said I would be using. So, uh, as you can see, it's uh, heavier, has more defense, uh, has more poise, so we're going to throw on some of these pieces. As you can see, uh, that is the fat roll now. Uh, I told you guys about this roll. Uh, as you can see, it's almost unusable. Uh, we actually accidentally pulled those guys when I went over there, so uh, let's go over here. Uh, I don't want to be fat rolling, so I'm going to see if I can get a mix going here that isn't fat rolling. Don't seem to be able to right now, so uh, let's throw on the hard mother armor for now. Take out this bush. All right, that was bad. Kind of stupid of me. I thought I was locked on, and I turned around. I go back up here. I'd like to fight this bush here on his own. I'd like to not get uh, mass kicks like that. This guy attacks. Alright. So, he's down. Let's take out this guy now. Pop off for health. Got two hands. Except he's only There we go. Alright, so he's down. So, uh, like I said, the Elite Knight Armor, I'm going to be using that mostly. Uh, I'm going to see if I can put on any pieces of it. Um, yep, I can wear uh, those pieces of it without fat rolling. Um, yep, apparently I am exactly on Equip Burden, that's, uh, that's creepy. At 50%. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, as you can see there, I have 63 poise. Uh, because of the wolf ring and the elite knight pieces I just put on. And uh, I have better defense because of the armor. It is much heavier. Like I said, I'm about to be fat rolling. So uh, just be cautious not to put on too much armor. Unless you don't mind fat rolling, of course. I do mind. So uh, I won't be doing that. There's another of those uh, gecko creatures here. I guess we'll take that out.
Alright, and we got another stone soldier. So, we're gonna fight this guy. Nope. Yeah, see, blocking with your weapon isn't as effective. Your weapon has almost no stability. And, uh, doesn't block 100% of physical. We usually don't even block 50% of physical. Uh, you actually don't have to fight this guy. We, uh, we're not going to. Yeah, they can hit through the wall. We can't. It's, uh, so just something the AIs can do. Just accept it. They can hit through the wall. You can't. Just, just live with it. Um, we're gonna come up here. He can follow us about yay far. He won't go much farther. Um, there's an NPC summon down there. Uh, if you break some of the branches at the bottom there, uh, you'll find a summon signature if you're a human form for Witch Beatrice. She is extremely useful in this fight. She will almost do the fight for you. Uh, we're not gonna use her help. Um, we will use our last gold pine resin in this uh, fog gate encounter. So uh, as you can see, you can see that there's a large creature up there before you even walk through this fog gate. So let's, uh, let's walk through and do this. All right, so this is the Moonlight Butterfly encounter. Uh, Moonlight Butterfly is pretty easy if you're a ranged character or if you summon the NPC Witch Beatrice, who I mentioned before. Uh, it's because she flies around and of course doesn't land, so it makes it difficult for you to hit her. Uh, that one attack she has right there is a giant blob of green. Uh, it does a large amount of damage if it hits you. Uh, it's really easy to roll dodge though. Then she's got those three attacks, uh, three shooting attacks there that uh, you just saw. Uh, those are a lot harder to roll dodge. Uh, I just usually block them, but my shield doesn't have high magic defense, so it's not doing very well. Uh, if you try to roll dodge them, you can uh, maybe have better luck, but if you get hit by them, it's uh, it'll do more damage, so be very careful of that. As you can see, the big blue blobs are very easy to dodge. You don't want to get hit by one of them, though. Uh, she does land, so don't worry melee characters, you're not uh, being cheaped out here. She will come in for a landing. Uh, this is why you're going to want to save that gold pine resin, it helps greatly on this fight. Even if you have a plus five weapon, she, uh, she's a pretty tough enemy. I mean, if you're using the Drake Sword, which I didn't show getting in this playthrough because I don't encourage using that weapon, and I didn't want to show people how to get it, uh, I'm pretty sure this fight is quite easy also, but yeah, everything is easy for the first part of the game with that sword, so it just takes the fuck right out of the game. Uh, so you can see here I'm trying to shoot her with my crossbow as she flies away. Uh, don't be near her when she's flying away, you can see there's a giant uh, AoE explosion. So I tried to heal at the wrong time here, and uh, running low on Estus, and I gotta wait for her to land again, so I'm getting a little bit nervous. Uh, have some humanity, so it shouldn't be too bad. So just strafe around, keep going. Uh, when she flies over like that, stay back away from her. She'll shoot that blue ball down, and it does a lot of damage. It'll break through your guard, most likely. So be very careful. Uh, I'm pretty sure I get tagged by it the next time she flies over. And uh, you can see exactly what it does, because I had my shield up and everything. And boom, right through my guard. So yep, just uh, beware of that attack. So I ran out of Estus here. I'm uh, down to my humanity. You can see sometimes that attack will just kind of hit the stone bricks in front of you and do nothing. And uh, that's a rare attack there, that beam attack. You can uh, roll forward or roll into it. It's the fastest way to dodge that. Usually rolling away from it will end up you getting hit coming out of the roll and you will die. And uh, yep, a few more swings and uh, the Moonlight Butterfly has fallen. Give a little cheer there. And uh, we get the Soul, the Moonlight Butterfly, and Humanity. Uh, we'll look at what that does in the next video. Uh, souls like that are usually used to create boss weapons. Uh, you can use them for a decent amount of souls usually, but uh, if you're looking to create a certain weapon, uh, like they're usually rare weapons, uh, you can look up online which boss souls create which weapons. Uh, I'll just say though, the Moonlight Butterfly Soul is used to create weapons for casters, usually. Or uh, intellect based characters. Intelligence. So we're going to pick up the Watchtower Basement Key, the Divine Ember, and the Homeward Bone. And uh, we're also going to look at what those do in the next episode. Uh, 
but until then, uh, I hope you guys enjoy, uh, enjoyed the HD quality, and uh, I will see you next time.